In order to lesson plan effectively using the LCIM, it's really important to think about your learning objective or your learning target before we even begin. That's what this video will be all about. These are the goals for this particular slideshow. If you just read through these, you'll see that what we're after is understanding what a learning target is, why it matters, what a good learning target looks like, being able to identify good ones from not so good ones, and to come up with a plan for how to use them. Learning targets are also called learning objectives, and you can use the words in interchangeably. Learning targets are typically designed more for students, but if we add an assessment piece to them, then they can also serve as an objective for a teacher. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. But the important thing to know now is that a learning target should clearly state what you expect students to know and be able to do at the end of the lesson. In assessment, you've been talking about KUD, what students will need to know, understand, and do. A learning target can accomplish that for us. It communicates the purpose of the lesson. Why is it so important to have learning targets? It's pretty simple. Pretty hard to hit a target that you can't see. If we want students to learn specific things, we need to direct them toward those things. Students are going to be much more successful in their learning if they know where they're heading and why. There are times, of course, that this is not going to be the case where we will want inquiry learning or we will want them to have a more open-ended experience. But most of the time, we want it to be very clear. We don't want there to be any surprises. This is what we're trying to learn. This is why it's important. This is where we're heading. I'm going to ask you to watch a short video. However, I just realized that the link here has been changed very recently, so the link will not work. The link instead is timssvideo.com slash us3-exponents. I'll also send this along in the email so that you have that link. But if you click on that link and watch this video, I think the times listed below will be the same. So watch them, watch the teacher from 3 minutes 48 seconds to 9 minutes 28 seconds. As you're watching, try to figure out what the teacher's learning target is. What is it that she's trying to teach? Where does she want students to go? How are they doing it? Where are students headed? So pause the video for now, go to the video, the other video, the Tim's video, watch that, and then come back and start this again. In examining this teacher's lesson plan, the teacher had listed the top sentence here as her learning target. Students will discover and then describe the rules for multiplying ex exponents. Did you see the students discovering? Did you hear the students describing? What do you think was really happening as you watched the video? It was probably more close to the second part here. Students will see exponents with blocks, view a graph showing exponents, and replicate the teacher's rules for multiplying exponents by completing a worksheet. In reality, this is what happened, whether or not the teacher intended for that to happen. Starting with a learning target in your planning is good for students and it's good for teachers. And communicating that learning target is good for students and it's good for teachers. Compare the list here. Take a minute and look at the student list and the teacher list and see what the advantages are. The use of learning targets is heavily supported by research and education. We're not going to take a lot of time looking at the research, but there are several slides here that will show you some of this research and some of the people who are working on this important topic. Read the text boxes as you go through these slides. This is what researchers are saying.
the text is a little messed up here, overlapping, but you can see more research that supports the use of learning targets. And more! Read these. You may recognize some of the names on these slides. Stiggins has written a book that is very current about assessment. It's possible it was referred to in your assessment class. James Popham has written many, many books on assessment, and you might be using one in your assessment class for your presentations. These are current researchers in this important field. Along with foundational research from all the experts that are working in this field, there have also been very specific empirical studies done on this topic. These are just some that show the positive effect of using learning targets with students. Robert Marzano is a very well-respected and current educational researcher. He has posed these two questions in his work on lesson design. Look at these two questions and see how you might answer them. These two questions get at the two parts of a learning target that St. Mary's likes to use. The first part, communicating clearly what students are going to learn. The second part, communicating clearly how students are going to show that they have learned that. The two together make a powerful learning target for teachers. Learning targets can be good or not so good. They can be effective or ineffective. To be effective, they need to describe exactly what we want students to learn. They need to be in student language. They need to be expressed by the student so the student could say, what am I learning? What am I supposed to be learning? They are things that should be able to be done by the student so that there's evidence of understanding. The students are doing. They're not just listening. And a good learning target describes mastery through an assessment rubric, not just a score or grade, but something with very specific criteria that can be measured. Here are some checks that a teacher can use to determine if their learning target is effective. Does it identify knowledge or skills to be learned, not just an activity? Is it specific to that day, not something that's too broad? Does it build toward a general unit goal? Does it fit into what the unit is supposed to accomplish? It is, a, is it aligned with an activity or performance that students will do? Not something passive, but something active. And is it tied to an assessment so that we are leading to developing a habit of evidence-based formative assessment? Are we going to know how students did on this learning target when the day's lesson is over? So the way that St. Mary's uses a learning target or a learning objective is to include both what students are learning and what they're doing to show that they're learning it. So we start with this sentence frame. Students are learning blank, and you fill that in, by blank, and you fill that in. In some classes, you might hear, students will be able to blank by blank. Sometimes one form or the other can fit a specific subject or content area a little better, but the idea is the same. Why do we want to do this? The list on the right, which you've already seen, reminds us why this is important. So now it's your turn. I'm going to ask you to stop this video when I'm done talking right now and instead look at the documents that you were sent along with this link and look at the learning targets that you were given and rank them. Do you think they're effective, somewhat effective, or not effective? When you're done with that, start this video again. Now look at the cheat sheet you were given with the quote answers on it. Of course there are not absolute answers here, but if you look at the answers you'll get some idea as to why I think these learning targets are either effective or ineffective, or if they're somewhat effective how they could be made better. If you share learning targets with students, you might alter them and include just the first part. For students we want a learning target to be very simple and we want it to be in their language. It's probably not as important for them to know the how, the assessment, 
That's what's important for the teacher because we use that assessment to backward plan in our lesson planning. But for the student, it should be simple and in eye language. See the examples here. I can explain why the formula for finding the total degrees in a polygon works. I can define mitosis and explain the four stages of the process in order. Simple, basic, students know where they are headed. The by is added on the left side so that the teacher knows this is how I'm going to know that the students have done this. Here is a series of learning targets that fit with a unit goal. So at the top you see something more broad. Students will learn that point of view and figurative language help tell a story. Underneath that you see daily goals. So each one of these daily goals could become a learning target for that day. One day they're learning to define simile and recognize examples in literature. The next day they're doing the same with metaphor. The next day they can tell the two apart. The next day they can explain how they add to writing or storytelling. The next day they can find examples of different points of view. And the next day they can explain how that affects the telling of a story. Putting these together day by day by day builds toward the unit goal. This is another example, except this time in elementary music. So the unit goal is students will be able to count a four measure rhythm that includes whole, half, quarter, eighth, and sixteenth notes and rests. But we break that goal down day by day. First, they clap whole and half notes, then quarter notes and half notes, then quarter and eighth notes, then eighth and sixteenth, then we put them all together. See how each day has its own goal, but it's building as we move forward in order to meet that unit goal. The next few slides are going to show you some possible ways to keep track of your unit goals and learning goals. It's housekeeping. There are many, many options and many ways you could do this, but the important thing is to have some sort of system to keep yourself organized. Teaching by flying by the seat of your pants can, affect, can have effective moments. But over the long run, it doesn't work so well. Here you see an option that has the more general things at the top. And then in the table, it's listed day by day. And for each day, we have standards, the daily target, the activity, the assessment, and any notes that will help you plan. Remember that your daily target or objective is going to be more narrow than the standard. The standard is more broad. So a standard might be the same for several days but the learning target will be different. The activity will be different. The assessment will be different. Take a minute and read this filled in chart from the example on the previous slide. Think about how well planned you would feel if you knew that this is what you were trying to accomplish. Notice that the standards are the same for all five days. They're more broad but each day has its own learning target, its own activity, its own assessment. When you are student teaching, you will be asked to complete a weekly planning template. That's not so much different from this. In your middle level education class, you will be asked to start very broadly and to plan a long range planning unit. You'll look at a calendar that's very broad, maybe a semester maybe a year, maybe a quarter. Within that, you'll plan units. From your units, you'll plan daily targets. We're going from broad to narrow, so we know specifically what it is we're trying to accomplish and where we're heading. We're walking up the steps, one step at a time. Because it's an error that's often made when people are starting with planning, we're going to hit the same point one more time. Standards are the goal and are used to define the unit topics. Unit topics are then broken down into daily learning targets. Learning targets are the path. Standards are the goal. Learning targets show us how we're going to get there. So how did you do? How well did I do explaining this? How well did you do listening? Do you understand what a learning target is? Do you know why they're important? Do you know what makes a learning target a good one? Can you tell an effective one from a non-effective one or something that's somewhere in the middle? Do you have a plan 
for how you might use learning targets and where you want to go with them? Do you know what your next step is in this plan? Our next step will be to think about moving this now toward lesson planning in social studies or in any other subject. That means moving toward the LCIM, the Learner-Centered Learner -centered Instructional Model. These are just some general hints. One thing we want to be careful of is to not let this work just become busy work. It should be practical. It should be helping us define what it is we want our students to know and how they're going to show what they know. It should make us a better teacher. It should give us material that we can revise year to year to year. Every year we change, every year we revise, every year we adapt and we improve. That's the whole idea, to get into a pattern of thinking, a mindset about what good planning is. And good planning starts with learning targets. So on to the LCIM. Take a look at the email I sent you or the other directions that you have and see what's next. Thanks for listening.